All right, Travis went good, so I'm going to do another video um, before uploading <coughs> the one I did on uh, the Joseph Smith Family Farm. Uh, this is two Mormons, obviously, because LDS critic. And. I did a video the other day where I removed the camera and uh, put it in a different position and now I just can't get it perfect again. <laughs> uh, uh, so the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, even Mormon, there's lots of discussions about wedding feasts. Lots and lots and lots. Give you some case examples. Old Testament, Samson. And uh, his wedding feast involved him killing a young lion, and then a beehive was within it. And I've already done all sorts of stuff talking about the symbolism of that, and how uh, it refers to Utah, Judah, Utah, same phonetically, and uh, the uh, beehive house and the lion house at Temple Square, where people go for their wedding feast after the sealing in the Salt Lake Temple. I myself did that, hmm. and uh, I, then you have in the New Testament, which we'll be going over those. Uh, the uh, parable of the wedding feast and the ten virgins. See, the thing Mormons need to realize is that they believe the scriptures apply to them. They're the true church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As Latter-day Saints, the wedding feast is symbolic of the Mormon God, Jesus, coming to the earth and pronouncing the Mormon church as the true church to all the world and that everybody then must conform all sullen and oh I was wrong I gotta go to the Mormon church now <laughs> that's how Mormons believe and Mormons are like yay come on join us pay your tithing which we'll put into an account that will gain interest and we won't use for the poor the hundreds of billions. I'm not letting Mormons down on this. And you guys shouldn't either. I'm getting low views on my other ones. Although the other, uh, the first initial ones are getting over 200 now. But don't, don't let it drop, guys. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Uh, who's the group? Keep pushing. Keep pushing. I can't remember who the group is that sings that song. Alright, so uh, let's go to the actual scriptures that talk about the wedding feast. Now, the one about Samson, well, that's easy, because Samson is the sun king. Samish is uh, uh, the Hebrew word for sun, and uh, the N is my discovery of uh, determinatives used in the language. And so, uh, when it applies to a person, the nun uh, character represents king as the determinative. Isn't that fun? Alright, so, uh, Matthew 22. <coughs> <coughs> the kingdom of heaven. See, this isn't really about the kingdom of heaven. It's the redactor to this book, who's who's distancing the rest restoration of the kingdom on earth the, the Messiah prophesied to come not Jesus Christ he's actually the father misnamed as the son and I, I've gone over that on other videos so hold your anger for until you after you listen to those other videos the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, 
when you understand monarchies in the ancient world and the marriages for his son. This is a succession. This is the last days parable. This is not a distant after you're dead kingdom of heaven spiritual symbol thing for our souls. Yes, but no. This is a last days parable. <coughs> and uh, the son is the King David or the King David representation is going to restore the King David the branch as the Isaiah and Jeremiah call him and uh, uh, he's getting married because that's what you do in order for succession is you've got to solidify the family unit uh, for the throne and he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding Mormons. Remember, Mormons, scriptures are likened unto you. You're the true church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Your church is supposed to be the restored church that's going to usher in the second coming of the latter days. You are the ones bidden to the wedding feast. And they would not come. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, Mormons. You're evil. A touch of evil. Iron Maiden. And he sent forth other servants. Other servants. So the first servants <laughs> weren't getting the job done. And so he sent other servants. Wait a minute. What happened to the first servants? saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. So the second set of servants are saying, Eh! Eh! <laughs> Body Python and the Holy Grail with the Frenchman. <laughs> their castle <laughs> and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise sounding familiar Mormons and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them bye bye And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. What? Not worthy? You've paid your tithing, and it has produced a hundred billion dollars in interest. <laughs> That was your fire insurance. What do you mean you're not worthy? Go ye therefore into the highways. That was the word. I was using streets to try to find it. And as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. The gathering. The Mormons fail. And so the gathering is of others in the world. So those servants which are brand new servants, the third set, went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And then there's another one about uh, uh, King seeing the guests, and uh, he then separates uh, the good from the bad. So, gathering is for all, then there's going to be a separation of the good and the bad after that gathering takes place. And, of course, those who are bad, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, outer darkness. And they use the passage 
that was used in section 121 of the Doctrine and Covenants Mormons, which all of you should have memorized because you went to seminary and institute and mission. And you know it by many are called, but few participate in the movie Frozen. <laughs> That's a revision of the older one that I had. Many are called, but few are frozen. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Mormons. Those who are not Mormon, you're like, what is he talking about? This guy is weird, man. It's a Mormon thing. Mormons know it. Mormons are pissed at me. All right, let's go now to the Ten Virgins, which all Mormons get when they become Mormon. <laughs> Section 132, sorry guys, or sorry women. <laughs> That's the commandment. <laughs> all of us men are supposed to have ten virgins. Section 132, read it and weep. <laughs> And read and I weep. Barry Manilow. <coughs> okay. Then shall the kingdom of heaven. No, the last days. The last days when the restoration of the kingdom of David shall be made. Be likened unto ten virgins. And they took their lamps. And they went forth to meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? The latter day Messiah. It's the wedding feast. Bridegroom. Wedding feast. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. This is not a 50 50 thing. As we previ previously read, it's not about percentages. Uh, President Oaks tried to claim in his conference talks that it was a 50 50 thing. No, it's not a percentage. This is a two category type condition. You have one group. Who are wise the other group who are foolish and the percentages can vary depending on your agency Mormons so remember the Mormon church is contained of two groups one wise the other foolish and we've already found out who the foolish ones are everyone <laughs> all right uh, them that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And of course you've heard it said that the oil represents the Holy Ghost and those who had the Holy Ghost with them. And then the oil represents the need to have the extra oil for the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's the inner interpretation for our own soul thing. This is the last days he's talking about here. This is an actual condition that will take place. <coughs> All right. While the bridegroom tarried, because there's going to be a hesitation. Everybody's going to be waiting as things are happening, and uh, and so everybody's slumbering and sleeping, slumbered and slept, because the bridegroom didn't come when he thought they were going to come. Sort of like 2000. Oh, that's certainly got to be the date, shouldn't it? Now every Mormon is sleeping. I talked uh, with my local patriarch. Been around for many an eon. And said, Mormons have been claiming that it was the end of the world for my whole life. And it never happened. And I'm not expecting any of this to be any different. He's the patriarch. <laughs> He's supposed to be laying his hands on people's heads and giving them a blessing about what they're going to be doing on earth in the future. So much for the priesthood of that man. Section 121. Many are called, but few are chosen. Amen to the priesthood or the authority of that man. So, uh, then midnight comes around. Not actual midnight, technically. Maybe you'd have to be looking at signs in the heavens. 
for that. And a cry was made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So that's it. The symbolism of the rain is falling. Go into the ark. Oh, that has to do with the second coming too? Oh yeah, Jesus sort of says that. In the days of no, so shall it be of the second coming. Yeah, oh yeah. Everything has to do with the last day's Messiah. And it's not Jesus Christ, <laughs> except that the Jesus is the wrong name. It's supposed to be for his son. Although, <laughs> I won't get into it. Not here. I've done it in other places. Uh, has to do with Amun, Mormons. Son Amun, Father Amun. Hmm. Oh yeah, same name. <coughs> and the foolish said unto the wise, Gimme, gimme, gimme. I don't have anything. I didn't bother to do anything. Gimme. <laughs> and the wise said, No! <laughs> Go get your own. And you better hurry. And so the uh, bridegroom comes, those who are ready, goes into the wedding feast. Those who don't are the ones in the other parable about the garments. And bye-bye. Uh, Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. And so, hmm. yeah, and then the talents is following this. If you read the president, first presidency response, the first one, to the hundred billion in tithing, uh, and that's the parable right there that follows the ten virgins, which is typical of corruption. They purposely isolate and pull out out of context, purposely ignoring the ten virgins that came before it. Ugh. Alrighty, there you have it. The uh, wedding feasts where the Latter day Saints are denied entrance. Bum, bum, bum.